In today's video, we'll talk about seven performance tips for D365 business users. Because mostly we are using Business Central on browsers being a SaaS system, it's very important for us to know what are the things we can do to optimize the performance. And to be very precise, to optimize the performance for the business users, the end users who are performing transactions on a daily basis. Now, as it is not an on-premise system, it is more important that we should focus on the performance part. My name is Kulten Shibam and let's get started. Okay, performance tip number one. Use Edge or Chrome browsers for D365 Business Central. Why? And the reason is in the concept of caching. Now, many of you must be knowing that in browsers, we have something which is called caching. What it basically does is whenever we load a page for the first time, it saves the structure of the page. And when we go on the same page for the second time, the structure is already loaded. It just takes the live data or the dynamic data at the same time. And hence, you will see that the page loads faster the second time because the structure of the page is already saved locally in the cache of the browser. Okay, so the concept is clear. Now, from business center point of view, if the structure of the page is already saved, then obviously we will have the same benefit. When we load the business center page for the second time, it will be faster. Hence, we must utilize the cache functionality of any browser. And why Chrome or Edge I'm suggesting? Because as you can see in the below table, Microsoft Edge and Chrome are the only two browsers who are supporting caching fully. If you see Safari, Firefox, it is partly available. Microsoft Edge Legacy, definitely nobody is using it now, which was called Microsoft Edge Legacy and Internet Explorer, unavailable. So we are left with two options and these two are the most prominent browsers, I would say, Edge and Chrome. Okay, let's move to performance tip number two. Don't use D365 BC in private or guest mode in browsers. Okay, why? So don't use in guest mode or in private mode. Again, this is related to caching of the browser. If you are using anything, let's say if you're using Business Central in guest mode, guest mode means you have not logged into the browser. Or let's say you're using it in private or incognito mode. In both of these scenarios, we don't get the option to save the cache if the page is not cached, we will not get the benefit of browser caching. Let's move to performance tip number three. Okay, <laughs> very basic one, but I believe many of us might not be noticing it, but keep the charger plugged into your laptop while using D365 Business Central. Yes, it's very important that whenever you are giving a demo or uh, even you should suggest to the business user that for optimum performance of Business Central, keep your system plugged in. Now let us know why. Business Central is running in browsers. So we need to see how the browser is designed, how the browser behaves in many cases for the Business Central to run in optimum state. Now, in many modern day browsers, some devices will automatically limit the resources available to the browsers when running on battery power. Okay, so this is the only reason. Because many resources will be limited because the system will detect that it is running on battery power. Hence, you will not get optimum performance. So, please make sure that when you are using Business Central and browsers, keep the charger plugged in. Though the difference will not be very much still. If you want it in optimum state, so this is the same to the business users as well. A simple yet very important 
performance tip. Okay, moving to performance tip number four. Connect to a network that has a latency of 250 to 300 milliseconds or less. Now, connect to a network means connect to your Wi-Fi, broadband, anything. What is latency? Uh, in simple terms, you can understand latency as the delay in network communication. Okay. Low latency means fast response. Latency means delay. Hence, low delay means fast response. So, if I say that a network have a high latency, it means the delay is longer for a communication to be sent from one network to another it takes more time okay so lower the latency faster the response now what it means in terms of business central in terms of business central latency means the latency from browser client to the microsoft azure data center that hosts the app or the communication between the browser in which you are running the business central to the data center the azure data center that hosts the app okay now let's understand it by having a look at it if you want to measure the latency you can go to azurespeed.com okay Here you can see it is mentioned that this tool tests latency from your IP location to Azure data centers worldwide. Okay. Now we need to select the Azure region. It means where my business center is hosted. So how will I check it for this? First I'll go to admin center. Now, this is the instance I'm using, production. I'll click on production. And you can see here the Azure region is South Central US. Okay, so I'll go to here and I'll select South Central US. Now, I'll check what is my latency. Here you can see graph is being generated now. And the latency is, let's say, 268, 267. Okay. Now, what was the expected latency between 250 to 300 milliseconds or less? So, this is fine. I'm getting here, let's say, 261. So, between 260 to 265, let's say. And this is good for me. Now, tip number five is very simple. The bandwidth should be greater than 1 Mbps now. This is something which doesn't need extra explanation. Everybody knows about it. What is bandwidth? And whenever we feel that the internet is running slow, we go to the browsers, we check the internet speed, and that is our bandwidth. So greater than 1 Mbps, uh, I hope everyone without any doubt is having an internet of greater than 1 Mbps anywhere. So this I will not explain further. But if somebody asks you what is the requirement, then just mention that for most of the cases, the bandwidth requirement is that the bandwidth should be greater than 1 Mbps. But we suggest that you should have greater than this. And obviously, all of us now have, in all the regions of India and even worldwide, bandwidth much greater than 1 Mbps. So this is not going to be a problem. Let's move to tip number six. Hide secondary content from the page and remove elements that are not relevant to you on the page. Now, hide secondary content, what does it mean? For example, when we open a sales order page, then we see the main page, header and line, and then we see the fact box as well. Now here, the fact box, now here the fact box can be considered as secondary content because that is not that much relevant for me for creating a sales order. It has some information, some data, some analysis. 
But the main content for me is the sales header and the sales line on the fact box. So the suggestion is, let me go to sales order first. Now you see when I click on this, I have the fact box expanded. Now it has many queues and datas which are coming from different tables. And hence this takes some time in loading this page. Hence it's better that we collapse this. Once we collapse this, the system remembers it and when we open it for the next time, you will notice that the fact box is by default collapsed and hence this page will be loaded faster. Okay, so make sure the secondary content is always hidden. What is the next one? Remove elements that are not relevant to your page. Yes, it is very important whenever we implement system we take care of everything the fit gap and the customizations and all but we forget to declutter the page it means let's say if I'm implementing the system and my client is not using the CRM part it means they're not using opportunity then why I see it here it's not needed so let's remove it so you know how to remove it go to personalize and just remove it by doing this, you're making the system faster. You're making this page load faster. This is a very simple, yet very efficient trick to optimize most of the pages. So my suggestion is whenever you implement a system, make sure in the profile, you customize all the profiles in such a way that it has only the elements that are relevant for that profile, nothing extra. It enhances the experience for the business users. Okay. Let's move to our last tip, which is use filter instead of list search for tables having large data. Yes, what does it mean? Let's go straight to Business Central and see. Now, if I am here, or let's go to general ledger entries. Now you can see in general ledger entries, we have a lot of data, correct? So there is one search. If we search here, let's say March, it's fine because we have some data, but still not a lot of rows like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 and lakhs, let's say. Hence, it has given me the results. Still, it's good. But if you have a lot of data, for example, let's say one lakh rows in here, then it is not suggested to use this search because this search looks for the data in all the columns available here. So it goes to each row and checks all the columns. And sometimes if the data is very large, you will see that the browser goes to not responding. This is called resource starvation. Hence, the suggestion would be in these cases, if you have a lot of data, you should go to filter and you should search anything by here. And this will be faster. Okay. So use these filters instead of the search if you are searching in a large data set. So that's all for today. I believe we have covered all the tips that we wanted in today's video and thanks a lot for watching this. See you in the next video.